Neil Harmon, CEO of VidAngel, thank you so much for being part of Three Questions today. Thank you for having me here, Bob. Now, we've seen your funny commercials on TV. What does VidAngel do, and is it legal? VidAngel allows families to filter nudity, profanity, and violence from popular movies and TV shows. And yes, it is legal, thanks to a law in 2005 passed by Congress and signed into law by President Bush, um, filtering um, content that you deem inappropriate within the walls of your own home as long as you've paid for the content and as long as you don't make a fixed copy of the altered version of the work is legal. Hmm. Why did you and your brother Jeff start VidAngel? What is the backstory there? Well, VidAngel was started by four brothers, actually. We're all fathers of young children, and we love content, and we love our family. Uh, so just, I mean, as a little bit, bit of background on content, my brothers and I started an ad agency, and we did a lot of popular ad campaigns. Uh, you might be familiar with the Orbrush Tongue Cleaner, mm -hmm. uh, the Purple Mattress, Poopery, Squatty Potty, uh, chat books. These are ads. That That's all, all, all you guys, huh? <laughs> yes, yes. So we, we did a lot of these ads and, and uh, we love good content. And if you don't mind a, a personal story, one of my favorite movies is Cinderella Man. It's a story of a man who is a boxer who falls and gets injured in the, during the Great Depression. And, um, and in his story, his young son steals a salami. And he takes the salami back to the store with his son. And he says, we just don't do that. And his son says that he's worried that he's going to be taken away from his home because there's not enough food and there's not enough power. And his dad says, I'll never, ever leave you. Later in the movie, um, he, he loses the ability to pay for the power. And one day, his, his wife comes home, he comes home to his wife and his children are gone. And he said, May, you cannot take the children. I promised our boy I wouldn't do this. And he goes and does everything he can to get the money. And he even goes to the government um, assistance and gets, this, gets enough money to pay the power bill and gets his children back. And later on, the last part of the movie, he, um, he returns the money when, when, when times get better for him. He, he goes back to the assistant's office. He's a famous boxer then. Everybody's watching him, wondering why is he at the government assistant's office, and he returns the money. And that moment, having my children experience that moment, is worth everything to me. Uh, but the coach who coaches uh, Cinderella Man, he's got a mouth. He's a New Yorker, and uh, every other word is a cuss word, and those are the kind of words that we don't say at our house. And so being able to show and share with my kids this amazing story about integrity without some of the elements that we just don't want to repeat in our home means everything, and that's why we started VidAngel. Now, uh, how big is the demand for a service that VidAngel provides, the filtering service, and is that demand growing? Yes, so uh, that's a great question. We did a study with the National Research Group based out of Los Angeles. This is a group that does studies for the studios. And they found that 40% of Americans would use a service like VidAngel. 40%? Yes. So why don't they? Well, they just don't know about it. And they haven't heard about it. And there have been there have been obstacles placed in the path of filtering technology since its inception. And um, starting from the DVD player, the original promise of the DVD player is that you can customize the playback, but that never came to fruition. A whole bunch of companies based in Utah and the South launched companies to do edited movies more than a decade ago. All of those companies were, uh, were sued and most of them were shut down. And um, one obstacle after another has prevented people from actually using the technology in a way that's really accessible. Hmm. Recently, VidAngel filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Why did you do that? So we, we filed for Chapter 11 protection in order to reorganize our business around a new streaming model. If I can just back up a, a couple of years, um, 
actually, let's back up 10 years, all the movie editing companies were around DVDs and discs. Fast forward to today, most people enjoy their media over streaming. So why doesn't filtering exist for streaming? That's the question that we had when we started VidAngel. And uh, that's the problem that we wanted to solve. And the only way that we saw solving that problem was by purchasing a movie so that the studios would get paid and then filtering that movie streamed over the internet. We, the only movies that were available for us to buy because the studios would never sell us a license were Blu-rays and DVDs. And the studios did not like this at all and um, sued us in California and managed to get that system enjoined, shut down. So we then set to work and said, how do we offer this service to families? And we built a new system with a much larger tech team. Uh, we built a new system that will allow you to connect your Netflix account to your VidAngel account, your Amazon account to your VidAngel account, and in the future, you, your Hulu, HBO accounts, and then you can enjoy all that content that comes from those services filtered. Mm. Why don't the studios want you to be able to filter their movies? Uh, w w with a little bit of backstory, uh, right after we were shut down, and just before our Ninth Circuit hearing in California, Sony Pictures came out and launched a website called cleanversionmovies.com. And on this site, you could browse Sony movies and their airline version and their TV version. And you could purchase these on iTunes, on Vudu, on other streaming services. And uh, Sony was doing their best at offering a service, seeing that the demand that VidAngel had demonstrated. And uh, within two weeks, they had to shut off the website because they got threats from directors, key actors in the industry. The, the Directors Guild of America told them, threatened to sue them. And so Sony said, you know, we can't hit the hand that feeds us. The directors are where we get our business. So w they shut down the service. That social pressure that exists inside of Hollywood is the underlying reason for which this has never been able to take off and get steam. But what about the uh, Family Movie Act of 2005? Doesn't that give you and other companies like you license to offer that service? Well, what Sony Pictures included? So Congress was trying to fix a law that would find a middle ground, that would ensure that the studios get paid, that would ensure that there aren't bootleg copies out there, that, that they don't get misrepresented, the directors don't get misrepresented, but the families had the ultimate say on what happens in their own home. So they fastened a law that would say, okay, company X, Y, or Z, VidAngel, if you follow this system, you don't need to get permission from the studios to allow a family to filter within the home, as long as that family's paying for the content. So that's what we built. Um, but the studio's position is that system only works for DVDs and Blu-rays, and when it comes to streaming, we need to get permission. No less than seven Hollywood studios are trying to stop you from offering your filtering services, but you believe that the law is on your side. Why? If you went to the average American and asked them, if you're watching a movie and something scares you, is it okay for you to cover your eyes? Sure. Yeah. Is it okay for you to plug your ears if you're hearing something that's offensive to you? Yeah, that's, that's okay. Now, let's take that a step further. Pick up a remote. Is it okay to do those same things with the remote control? The average American would say, certainly. So now Congress has fastened a law that allows a technology company to become a pre-programmed remote control. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that this is fair, that this should exist in America, that families should have this kind of right and this kind of privacy and this kind of free consumption of speech in their own home. So we believe that just be, if you just look at it at face value, we believe we'll win because 
this is fair and good for American families. But Vidangel was enjoined by the federal court in Los Angeles, was Correct. it not? Yes, it was. On what grounds? On the grounds that um, we decrypt discs, Blu-rays and DVD discs, that we make a copy of those discs, and then we filter that copy to the home. They say that that's not okay, that per the, the Digital Millennium and Copyright Act, that that is not allowed. Um, our interpretation of the Family Movie Act is different than theirs. It may be that their interpretation ends up being the, the correct one. If it does, that is the reason VidAngel filed Chapter 11. That allows us to solve that, to pay any damages associated if we are found uh, on the wrong side of the law, but continue to offer families exactly what they need with their Netflix account, their Amazon account, their HBO account, and other streaming services. This is somewhat of a complicated issue, but for those folks who uh, are brand new to it and aren't immersed in it, can you explain the difference between your old model and the new model yeah. that you launched in June? Absolutely. So the old model was pay every time that you watch. You would come to VidAngel, you would buy a disc, a movie, for $20, and then you'd watch it and you'd set the filters to your specifications and enjoy the movie in your home. You could keep the movie if you wanted it or you could sell it, the disc back to us um, uh, at a discounted price and then um, you could watch another movie in a month, in two months, whenever you wanted to. Did families have the actual disc? The no, the disc, disc sat in a vault inside of VidAngel's headquarters unless they requested it. Hmm. So they could have it shipped to them if they wanted to. The new model, you can try out for free. It has a 30-day free trial, after which it's $7.99 a month. And it includes the ability to connect your Netflix account, your HBO account, your Amazon account, and filter those. And it also includes VidAngel original content, um, movies and um, TV shows that uh, we've produced and, and launched on our system. So the new model doesn't have any physical um, disc or anything associated with it. It just runs the stream through VidAngel and... That's correct. How, how are the courts viewing that model? So we asked um, the courts uh, twice in California whether or not the new model was okay given their rulings on the old model. And they refused to answer and said that that would be better determined in a new lawsuit. And so we filed a new lawsuit here in Utah to determine that our new model is lawful. And where are you in that lawsuit now? At the very beginning stage. Hmm. The Family Movie Act of 2005, and I'm gonna quote here, states that making limited portions of the audio or video content of a motion picture for private home viewing imperceptible and the creation of technology that enables such editing is not an infringement of copyright or trademark. It seems to be tailor-made for your company, VidAngel. On what grounds are you having to defend yourself? That is the multi-million dollar question. Um, but I think it's important that we just back up for a second and look at the numbers. VidAngel is the highest rated streaming app for Hollywood movies on the market. Higher than Netflix, higher than Disney's own apps, higher than Fox's apps. It is the highest rated, and there's a reason for that, that Angel is providing people what they want. Um, secondly, when the studios sued us and said, no, 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 you can't do this, uh, 70,000 people voluntarily do donated to our lawsuit. Uh, 70,000. 70, Holy cow. Uh, over 10,000 people wrote letters to the judge. Over, almost 200,000 people s signed a petition that was not started by us. It was started by a, a pastor and his family in Florida. Um, over $10 million were invested in VidAngel in, in, in less than five days in order to give us the resources that we need to see this through, to make sure that the family wins. 
So it sounds like David versus Goliath, but David's got a pretty, got more than one stone in his, in his pocket. Well, I, our, our 10 million versus Hollywood's billions is, is still a very, very small stone, and we hope it is smooth enough to do the trick. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're fighting, we feel like, we, that uh, justice is on our side. The airlines and television networks have been editing Hollywood movie content for years, and yet we don't hear any hue and cry about that. Why don't we hear a hue and cry over the editing of airline movies and TV network movies? And in addition to that, um, there are movies distributed in China and in Muslim nations, in India, that are completely different cuts. Uh, the, the Muslim version of The Wolf of Wall Street is 40 minutes shorter than the U.S. version. So the artistic argument does break down when you bring up that kind of a question. The, I think the key factor here is that in the case of the airlines and TV, there's a government agency that's forcing them to do it. It's saying, you know, you could have a six-year-old in a plane next to an adult, so we need to make sure that the content doesn't offend uh, in a public setting. Um, but there's a check. There's a big check that gets written, and the director says to themselves, do I want to let my work get dumbed down in their eyes for the airline in order to get this big check? And at the end of the day, the director gets to sign off and say, yeah, that's OK. Um, but the director could refuse the airline, and then their movie wouldn't be shown in the airline. Uh, the difference between VidAngel's technology and the TV and, and, and the airlines is the family holds the ultimate authority. They are the ones who get to, to have the say. And um, we think that that's an important distinction because not all, not all people are the same. Not all people want to experience their content the same. And, um, and so it makes sense that if you pay for something and then within the privacy of your own home you change it, that that should be okay. It, it seems a little disproportionate, the, the director's concern with people doing something with their product in their own home in private as opposed to what happens when their movies are edited for TV and for airlines. Why is, that, and why is there such a discrepancy in their protestations that way? Oh, goodness. Um, the battles were fought a long time ago. On, on the TV, uh, the airwaves, and on the airlines. And um, the government and, and Hollywood came to an agreement where, um, where it worked. We feel like that this battle for families was fought in Congress back in 2005. But now in the streaming age, it has to be refought. Um, because our reading of the law says that this, is, that this law also applies to streaming. The studio's reading of the law says, no, you need to get permission from us to stream. And so we've got to resolve this. Well, if, if this is correct, the, the, the um, wording from the Family Movie Act of 2005 says, and the creation of technology that enables such editing. Is that not at the core of the current lawsuit? Yes, it is. And we believe that ultimately we will prevail. Back in 2005, Forbes magazine described the filtering industry as it was starting to emerge as a predicted $100 million market. Now, it seems to me Hollywood wants to make more money regardless. Why would they not take advantage of the obvious demand for cleaned up versions of the movies when there is that kind of value associated with that demand? You ever heard of the term of why bite the hand it feeds you? Um, that's the way the studios see it. I've been with studio executives, sat in their offices, and seen in their eyes that they would like a technology similar to VidAngel. They just cannot provide it because the directors, they see, they see themselves as downstream from the directors. The directors are the ones who have the artistic talent. They are the leaders. They're the ones who create the box office hits that Americans love so much. And so if any, any single studio steps out of line, like Sony did, when they started offering the TV and airline cuts in the home, 
uh, they get slapped. And if, the, and if they don't fall in line, then they'll get blackballed by the directors. And that hurts their business. And if I might add, I think in the case of Disney, and Disney leading this fight against VidAngel, they have an economic incentive for us to lose. What is that? So Disney thinks that they own the family market. And they very nearly do. A technology like VidAngel makes more content accessible to the family and therefore dilutes the family market for Disney. And we believe that this is the economic reason for which Disney will not back down on the fight with VidAngel. Mm. We hear the directors protest along the lines of the sanctity of their art, but as you have said, that argument starts to break down when we look at the fact that the TV and the airline versions of these movies from these directors are, have taken all of the objectionable stuff out. If, art, if the art argument doesn't hold up, that leaves money and power. So which is it? What is the bottom line of this issue? Are they after money or are they after power? So originally I thought it was a combination, but going through the process of trying to offer money in every conceivable fashion to the studios so that we could provide this service and then having them reject every attempted offer um, we do, this is about control. This is about who has the authority to control how you view content in your own home. Is it multi-billion dollar studios and super powerful directors? Or is it the father or the mother or both in the family? That is the real, that, that is where the real battle is. The, all the arguments about copyright all the arguments about uh, fairness and, and, and VidAngel's not doing this correctly um, that the studios are making, they are a smokescreen. The real battle he he here, because this, is, this would be solved, Bob, in one moment if Disney came over and sold VidAngel a license to allow them to do it in the home on their own movies. Disney's the leader. Then the rest of the inter industry would follow and the directors would roll over eventually because they roll over with the airlines, they roll over with China, they roll over to the money eventually. Um, it would be solved in an instant. But what is really at stake here? It's about control. It's about the ability to control how you view co content in your own home. This has implications outside of the family, has implications um, outside of this legal battle. Um, but it is an important battle and it's one that uh, we believe society will be a better place if we win. And we believe that, the, that at the end of the day, the studios will be a better place. If you remember back um, a few decades, the studios fought Sony on a little video recorder called um, Betamax. And this video recorder would allow you to record a TV show so you could watch it later. And the studios were just roaring and they were so upset about this technology because they thought, oh, this facilitates copyright infringement. It went all the way to the Supreme Court and the studios lost. And that ushered in one of the largest dollar, uh, like largest profit periods for the studio system that they've ever seen in the home in entertainment market because all the VCRs and Betamaxes got sold all over the industry and all the, v the cassette tapes that were sold, it, it was billions and billions of dollars. a whole new industry. branch of the industry. That's yeah. right. And sometimes they seem to just, in, in efforts to control everything, they, 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 they don't even do what's best for them. And we think this is another in example of that. This is, this, these are, oh, oh, more, the majority of our people say they wouldn't have watched the movies that they've watched on our service without the VidAngel filtering technology. It is a new market, and when we win, we believe it will ultimately help the studios. You say that the directors are after control. What makes you think that control is at the bottom of this? Because they would, take a, they would take a deal, a financial deal that makes them more money if it was about money. But if it's not about money, 
then it's really just about pushing filtering technology out of the market so that it's not popular, it's not usable, it's not that a family's got to figure it out on their own, and um, people who want to watch content in this way have to be second-class media citizens. That's what they, that's ultimately they want. That's, that's control. Why do you think they want to control the content in private homes? I think it would depend on who you ask. Um, can I draw an analogy? Sure. I live in Utah Valley right now, and Utah Valley gets an unfair share load of being called the bubble, the Happy, happy Valley bubble. Mm -hmm. Now it's justified. Utah Valley has its idiosyncrasies, and, um, and it's very interesting that way. But um, I believe Hollywood has a similar bubble where all the people who live there have a certain sty lifestyle. Many of the f their families are broken down. Um, they're less likely to have children, more likely to have pets, more likely to have extramarital relationships, more likely to, um, to, do, to, to, to live a lifestyle that doesn't match middle America. They create their art, and they create their art, and they put their heart and soul into it. And I won't take anything away from an artist who's really trying to communicate something to the world. And I, I would support their right to present what they create in the public sphere exactly how they want it presented. I think their desire to control stems from... Um, Bob, you, you know, if you, if, if, if you have a dispute, I hate to put you on the spot with, with, your, with your wife, um, or if I have one with mine, then our, the human tendency is to think that our way of thinking is the correct way. And you mean it isn't? <laughs> <laughs> so, so if we think that our way of thinking is the correct way of thinking, then that's the way that we want to share with the rest of the world. Right. And, and, and so I think that's where the control comes in. I've, I've created this for you, so experience it as I intended you to experience it. And um, they don't want to give that up unless they're forced to. Is there any correlation or any relationship between the demand for the filtering services and the culture that we see Harvey Weinstein and others like him having created? I'll let your audience be the judge of that, but I do find it ironic that in the face of rampant torrenting and pirating of content, child sexual abuse, um, female objectification in Hollywood, and an uproar against what Hollywood's creating, that the studios are going to such effort to shut down a small Utah company who is just trying to make, provide a service that f American families want. So do you think there's a relationship, a correlation between the demand and that culture? I think Americans at the end of the day, they want to experience great stories. And um, they also want it, you know, to, to escape, to learn lessons. But they also want to uh, protect the innocence of their children. And there's a few things that Hollywood has learned or embraced that American families don't want to, and uh, that's okay. Mm. How do you see this lawsuit resolving? Where will VidAngel be in, say, five years? So VidAngel has two goals. Number one is that filtering on modern devices in the 21st century is easy, accessible to the American family, to any family. The second goal is that filtering choices would have an impact on the future of content. We started a series called Dry Bar Comedy earlier this year, and we've invited amazing comedians from all over North America. We've, we've shot 105 comedy um, specials, and we shot them right at our studio down in, in Provo, and uh, they, all these comedians sign a contract that pays them more if the audience back at home filters them less. And, and, and as a result, comedians from LA, New York, Chicago, 
uh, Mexico, Canada, they have come here, they have bent over backwards to serve the audience, and they've embraced those constraints and said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make people laugh inside of this context. And um, it has exploded. Uh, we've had uh, 25 million minutes watched of, of dry bar comedy this month alone. And um, it, it, it's, it's just, it's blowing up and uh, people love it and it gives people a chance to escape. And we feel like that that is the, our, like our first example of this is how we can create content that serves audiences and that uh, where, the, where the artists respond to the audience and what the audience would like to see. So you have the dry bar comedy, and what else is in the works? I mean, is, is VidAngel then going to become the parent company for yet another studio that creates family fair kinds of things? Yes, so VidAngel Studios, we announced uh, December of last year, and uh, dry bar comedy was our first original produ production. We did a theatrical release of Tim Timmerman, Hope of America. Um, we have other um, productions that are coming down the pipeline shortly, some exciting stuff that hasn't been announced yet. Well, we'll have to keep our eyes and ears open. Neil Harmon, CEO of VidAngel, thank you so much for being part of Three Questions. Thank you, Bob.